Hello and welcome to a glorious PF International for round three of the Daytona D-Max Inter Heats Championship. One of the heats has just got underway. Here's the Inter's drivers now coming over the bridge. Of course, this the famous Litchfield Bridge. This one of the, oh, a little bit argy-bargy there. This one of the only cir kart circuits in the world, outdoor circuits, to have a bridge and tunnel section. So we've seen the bridge and you can see how uh, tasty it can get over there let's say a lot of people making moves in the enduro races there today so we're just going to go and have a, a look if you follow me Ben down at the tunnel so the first corner they come through a flat out left hander as you can see over there then they turn right then they're going to come through this tunnel here if you uh, just walk down Ben I think we'll uh, just get there in time to catch him uh, this is essentially turn three, which is a, a banked left-hand corner, which sweeps all the way up to get to the bridge. And uh, let's see, they're just heading down the start-finish line. So if we uh, walk a little bit fast, I think we'll make it. There, you can see the tunnel now. Watch as the drivers come out and look how quickly they are going at this point. Look how fast they are going. There, Bobby Trunley trying to make a move up the inside and he's made the move. So this also, an overtaking position as well as you come through the tunnel. You've got to be a bit brave to do it. But uh, as you can see, what a fantastic facility. Perhaps the best track in the country. Some people even argue it could be one of the best in Europe. And D-Max is here today into Heat's final coming up next. Final time for the Interheats here at PF International. It's round three of the 2017 Daytona D-Max Championship. I'm Chris McCarthy alongside me for the first time in D-Max. It's Alex Goldschmidt. Alex, talk us through what happened in the heats. Well, Bobby Trundy hasn't had a good weekend at all. He went straight on past the first infield uh, hairpin on heat one. Uh, then also had to take avoiding action, I believe, in heat uh, in one of the other heats as well. So that's put him down on 10th on the grid. So you'll line up for the inter heat final. It's Chris Hackworth ahead of Jordan Taylor, Joe Ellis and Alan Curtis on row two. David Stephen, Mike Copping, row three, Chris Alcock, Xander Mahoney, George Hucknell and Bobby Trundy completing your top ten. Twenty carts in this uh, encounter. Philip Senior is ahead of Anatoly Julko, Tom Eastwood, John per Jonathan Purton, Andre Careless, James Cook, Ryan Welch, Joe Phillips, Lee Kerry and James Browning, who uh, really hasn't had a great weekend to remember, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, as you said, uh, Bobby Trundy, this of course all adding to championship points. Uh, Bobby Trunley came into this with 44 points uh, advantage over the rest of the field, but already throughout the heat he's lost 30 points to Chris Hackworth, who was only 44 points back. So all to play for then as they are coming out the or coming towards the last corner. Not been a good weekend so far for our championship leader, as Alex said. Alcock and Hackworth trying to capitalise on that in this final they come up towards the start finish line then hackworth and jordan taylor on the front row do we get away first time yes we do they go across the start finish line jordan taylor all oh, going wheel to wheel there with uh who was that that was joe ellis wasn't it in the blue racing that, that is joe ellis and alan curtis for close company as they filter around the uh, the top of the hill over the litchfield bridge for the very first time of asking uh, with chris hackworth leading the way and I think, yes, that is, uh, I think that is Jordan Taylor behind him. It is Joe Ellis' is third. Fourth place is, uh, is, that, is, that David, who, is that David Steven? That is David. Place? I think that is David Steven. So uh, Alan Curtis has lost out on the start because we saw nearly three wide. As uh, we've seen another driver put their hands up in the air, just circulating to another driver who maybe pushed him a little bit wide. That was the number 21. Oh, in oh, a big incident. That's, that's, that's five, six carts involved there. Oh, 30, 31 was one of the numbers. James Cook was involved. Oh, and well. the, and uh, can't quite make it. I can't quite make that out, but well, I'm sure we will do shortly. Involved. We'll, we'll let you pick that one up, Alex. But I'll just look towards the leaders for now. Um, Chris Hackworth has a, a few cart length advantage. Second place is uh, Jordan Taylor. Third place is uh, Joe Ellis. Then it's uh, Mike Coppin. No, David, it is Mike Coppin in fourth. Wow, so Mike Coppin in fourth place, new race suits this time, and no neck brace. So Mike Coppin uh, 
a little bit uh, going to have to get used to the new look for Mike Coffin. And then it's David Stevens, Arna Mahoney, Bobby Trundley, George Hucknall, Chris Alcock and Alan Tolly Dorco. Who was involved in that? Um, well, it looks like Ryan, Ryan Welch, the number 32, was involved in that. And I think you probably had the likes of Jonathan Purton, Lee Carey, the numbers 7 and 11 as well. But there were five, six carts at the very least involved in that incident on the uh, second infield air bin. Back to the leaders. Oh, Mike Coppin up the inside of Joe Ellis there. Good move from Mike Coppin into third place now. Going along very well is Coppin, just having to defend slightly into the chicane. Behind, uh, behind Joe Ellis now, it's uh, Stephen. So we've got Hackworth and Taylor out front on their own at the moment. And they're uh, fairly equidistant themselves because they're split by six tenths. Jordan Taylor, where did he come into this weekend in the championship? 11th place, he didn't do round one, but he was on the podium at round two. So Jordan Taylor getting better and better so far this season. And I think uh, Bobby Trumley is, uh, is on the move clearly. Started 10th, now P7. Now P6, he's, back, he's gone got past, past Arna Mahoney. He's really, really upped his game for the final. One of us is going to have to go on Bobby Trumley watch because I think he's going to be making... I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll take that gladly. We'll see how Bobby gets on over the course of the race. Up ahead, Mike Coppin. I think he's just lost a place to Joe. Well, he's lost two places, Joe Ellis and David Stephen. Both go through, and now Stephen goes up the inside of Ellis, going in towards the first hairpin. Does he hold on? No, he doesn't. So Joe Ellis back through to third. David Stephen fourth. Mike Coppin fifth. Oh, Bobby. And is that our Bobby Trundley? That is Bobby it? Trundley bumping bumpers. So that was uh, with Mike Coppin, who uh, gives... Uh, Trundley a good old stare as he looks behind and then it's Xander Mahoney, Chris Alcock who's just set a new fastest lap. Behind Alcock it's George Hucknall and Anatoly Dorco. And Bobby Trundley I think may have got the thousand yard stare from Mike Coppin quite literally. Yes, yes. <laughs> basically. But, but the thing is Bobby's... What are you doing mate? Yeah, what, on the lines of that. Hang on look I've got a bumper, you've got a bumper but don't hit me please. So, uh, yeah, so Chris Hackworth still continues to lead. And Bobby Trundley's in the strip, slipstream with Mike Coppin. Coppin, I think, was pointing to the left for some reason there. But Ch Trundley's gone up the inside. He's gone up the inside, up the hill. Yep, he has, going. he has. He's, he's taken the place from Mike Coppin. Oh, it's up to Coppin's on the grass. And Coppin, oh, my. Coppin was on Coppin the, grass, on the grass. That was a very brazen, robust manoeuvre there. Zana Mahoney went through then, and Coppin's now having to defend from Chris Alcock. So Coppin down into seventh place, which could turn to eighth place very shortly. Further up the road, David Stephen is lining up Joe Ellis. All of this is helping uh, Bobby Trondi and Zana Mahoney to get closer. But it's also allowing Chris Hackworth to pull away from Jordan Taylor in the process. Yeah, the gap is now 1.7 seconds, and uh, it, you won't be surprised when I tell you that uh, the fastest lap is with Chris Hackworth. 108.623. He turns his way out the left hander, down towards the last two corners. Hackworth comfortably leading for now. So come across the line, second place then, it is Jordan Taylor in third place, leading a, a bit of a queue of carts there. There's four Alex of them there, there's, there's four of them, there's Joe Ellis, David Stephen, Bobby Trundley and Xander Mahoney, literally nose to tail. And then behind that we have a good old battle going on between, uh, I think that's, uh, is that Alcock, it's Puppin and Alcock isn't it, behind that, so two big battles going on inside the top ten one involving four carts and one involving two oh, oh, and keep an eye on the battle for two and here we go David Stephen is being pushed by Bobby Trunley Trunley's putting it up the inside of Stephen there trying to get part behind Joe Ellis and it looks like Zander Mahoney's waiting in the wings and uh, Oh, there was a bit of contact there between Stephen and Ellis there, which... Uh, oh, well. And uh, that's also compromised Zana Mahoney as well, so Mike Coppin's back in Three the mix. Three wide into the chicane. Three wide into the chicane, and Coppin gains two spaces in one hit. You don't see that very often. That's going to put Coppin into fifth place. And it all got a little bit delayed there, didn't it? It, it was um, basically, I think it was... Uh, Stephen hitting the back of Ellis, Trundley was there, Mahoney got delayed and then Mike Copping just literally sprang out of nowhere to take a couple of places. Let's go on board with uh, one of our drivers then, let's uh, go on board with uh, maybe Jordan Taylor, oh, in fact Chris Alcock there, why don't we go on board with him, he's in 8th place, you can see a queue of cards ahead of him, which is uh, David Stevens on Mahoney and Mike Coppin as they turn their way up towards the Litchfield Bridge, now they go right be uh, left sorry then it'll be the right off the bridge oh watch out Bobby Trundley's really pushing Joe Ellis here we go trying to go up the around the outside 
a little bit squirrely on the brakes there from Alice and Trunley is trying to force the issue. They go side by side hanging to the second infield hairpin and there's a train of five cars being led by Mike Copping behind. Yeah, it's, it's Copping, Stephen, I think that is next along and then it is uh, Alcock, Mahoney and I think at the back of the queue is George Hucknall now in ninth place. So George Hucknall is in there as well. So very close fighting from fifth backwards from Coppin backwards no fight for the lead whatsoever Jordan Taylor also uh, on his own in second but third place is uh, up for grabs here it's Joe Ellis versus Bobby Trunley it's happened many a time and he's going to try uh, an over ambitious move for third place there sensibly Trunley pulled out of that one was never going to be on that in fact I think Joe Ellis and Trunley. And Mike Copping's been bugged. Oh, there's a spin. Oh, big incident. Copping, and I think that was also, that was uh, that was Chris Alcock involved. Oh, dear, Mike Coffin. Well, just T-boned him, I think. That's how I saw it, it. It was a little bit of a nudge from the rear, and then all of a sudden, Alcock span round, and Mike Coppin hit the side of him. It was a... It was a it wasn't a big incident in terms it, of a bad one. It no, was just it, a, in terms of position, it, it, it was quite significant, wasn't it? Com it? Yeah, it compromised the pair of them, really. But we were waiting to see whether Joe Ellis was going to have an answer for Bobby Trundley. Probably not. Bobby Trundley's up into third place. He's taken Joe Ellis around the last part of the track, so he's up into a podium slot. Slot. Look at Bobby Trundley coming down the start, finish straight, Alex. He's coming up towards turn one now. Here we go. It's on. It's definitely on here between he the pair. him in by eight tenths last time. Crikey. Eight tenths of a second. The, uh, he's there and he's already up the inside. He's Bobby already Trundley up the inside. He's through. He's side by side. He's got the inside. He's got the racing line going over the Litchfield Bridge. And he takes second. He takes second from Jordan Taylor. But Taylor might have the rundown coming down the straight. He does. He's ducking down his ducking down his race helmet, trying to get the toe. He's gonna trot he's thought about putting it one up the inside of Trunley. Not quite yet. He's got a potential couple of at least another lap or so to do so, I would imagine. Yeah, Bobby Trunley, to be honest, though, not even defending. I think he knows that he's going to pull away here. That's uh, not saying anything against Jordan Taylor, but at the rate Bobby Trunley closed him in on, we've got one lap to go. Oh, well, we are on the last lap, in fact. I think we are actually already on the last lap as they turn their way through the Mike Wilson complex. Chris Hackworth is coming up towards the last two corners. Is this last lap on the board now? Is this the last lap? It is. So, last lap this time then. Hackworth up towards the line. One to go. So, three for the last two remaining spots on the podium. Jordan Taylor's closing in in the toe. He's back with Bobby Trunley again. And this is the beauty of the PF International circuit. Bobby Trunley is now having to defend Alex. But look who's waiting in the wings as well. Joe Ellis in Joe fourth. Ellis. <laughs> Joe Ellis could strike. It's a possibility. He could get third. He could get second. Wait and see. Let's go down then. Two hairpins coming up next. And uh, Bobby Trunley forced to defend here Jordan Taylor looks to the outside he can't forget about Joe Ellis in fourth place though now they go to hairpin number two and well Bobby Trunley that was one of the longest stairs I've seen someone do between uh, two corners there looked over his shoulder and had a good old assessment of it and Jordan Taylor ran wide out the second hairpin Joe Ellis is going to sneak through oh they're side by side Jordan Taylor trying to hold on Jordan Taylor holds on oh and Joe Ellis is off on the off on the cones there that was literally side by side remember um, Jamie Winkup and Scott McLaughlin a couple of years over in uh, Surfers Paradise. That was one battle. We just literally saw a repeat of that just then. Hackworth comes across the line. Hackworth takes round three victory behind second place. He's going to go to Bobby trying to give it a good old dab. Yep, tenth to second. Fair play. Third place goes to Jordan Taylor. Fourth to Joe Wellis. Fifth was David Stephen and then it was Arna Mahoney, Chris Alcock, George Hucknall, Mike Coppin, Tom Eastwood. Alex, give us the rest of the order. And the rest of the order, Anatoly Duco was in 11th place ahead of Alan Curtis, Andre Curlis in 13th ahead of Philip Senior, Joe Phillips, Lee Kerry, Jonathan Purton was 17th and it was James Cook, James Browning and Ryan Welsh completing the running order for the 20 strong grid. So that's it with Chris Hackworth winning the Inter final very shortly. It's the heavies. Right, into Heat's podium, Jordan Taylor. Yeah. But are we all right there, Bobby? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're going to break the podium, do it, you might as well do it when, it, when we're finished using it. Uh, Jordan, you're, you're back on the podium for, the yeah. for a second round in a row. Uh, was there a boost of confidence, would you say, from the last round? Yeah, because I was, I was really struggling with practice the day before, and it was sort of like, shot my confidence a bit. So um, it's nice to actually, you know, get on it today and uh, back on the podium.
So. And the race itself, a good battle with Joe Ellis. Yeah, just a bit. I mean, he got a bit, uh, bit argy bargy towards the final stages, but I managed to hold him off on the inside. So, but uh, yeah, it's good for me and uh, carry on from there. Hopefully, go one up next time. Yeah. You're getting close to that victory. So well, well done, John. We'll see. Thank you. Cheers. Well done, uh, Bobby. No, not not the best of heats. I, I know. I understand one heat. You took the a massive shortcut, and, and not by not by choice. Uh, straight across the first hairpin, uh, you had problems. Started tenth. What what were you expecting from there? All I was hoping for was a miracle. Really, um, I, was, I wasn't expecting to be um, right up. I wasn't really expecting a podium, but I somehow managed to turn it on and just fight my way through the pack pack really I mean it's all right I guess it's all right times to second it's all right isn't it? it's not <laughs> bad well, well, well done Bobby well done another podium yet again but our winner Chris Hackworth you're down the road mate you got to be happy with that you know I think it was over four seconds you won by let's see 4.9 seconds yeah well I was actually starting to be a bit cautious you know since me and Jordan's clipping the clipping the curb and getting a wide hitting the cones and that so you back off a little bit to avoid the curbs and getting any damage you know the batch is falling off or something but so you once i got the gap you know i managed to like just keep it steady but finally got some three good heats that put me you know good for the final position but and then bobby like say had a bit of a, a bad heat i think your brakes failed or something and then uh but yeah, got a, got a bit of a gap at the, bit at the start and then uh, just keep, enjoy it, just enjoy it. I mean, enjoy this racetrack, you know, I've always have and uh, hopefully we're back again. Yeah, hope so as well, maybe next year, but good stuff, Chris. Well done on a, a commanding victory. As I said, almost five seconds in the end. Been brilliant racing here. Make sure you come down and get involved. Maybe it's uh, you we could be speaking to next on the podium. If you do want to get involved, visit our website or call this number.